Hi, and welcome back. My name is Gonzalo Artiach, a pharma biotech equity analyst here at AVG. The next company presenting today is Synclus Pharma. And with, with us, we have here today the CEO, Christer Alberi. Christer, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm going to present Synclus Pharma today. And uh, um, I will start here with a short introduction. Uh, Synclus Pharma, we are a Swedish pharmaceutical company. Uh, focusing on gastric acid-related diseases. Uh, we have a lead candidate called linaprazon glorate, which represents a new mode of, mode of action, new class in this area, uh, which is the first innovation for more than two, th uh, three decades. Uh, and uh, we, our substance definitely have the chance to become best in class. We have a strong IP uh, and, a, and a good protection situation. And our focus area is, uh, will be a more uh, niche target population where we focus on the eGERD patients with moderate to severe uh, eGERD and patients only having partial response from the former uh, uh, standard of care from the proton pump inhibitors like uh, Lucec or Nexium. Despite this, this is a huge potential. Uh, you have plenty of patients in this sector. Uh, so the total market potential uh, uh, in this uh, target population is approximately 12 billion uh, US dollar annually. We have, yes, we have finalized phase two results, uh, very, very good results. Uh, and uh, we have also um, finalized our end of phase two meeting with FDA. So we have a roadmap now how to go forward and ready to start a phase three program, uh, which we aiming for starting up during next, uh, during next year. We have a strong investor base, uh, despite we are not listed, uh, with a very good track record within the biotech, uh, as, you, as you also can see on the screen here. Uh, more on, on top of that, we also have a very good management team with a history of, of uh, knowledge in the development of gastric acid-related disease drugs such as low second axiom, uh, but also not only how to develop them, also how to commercialize them. Uh, we are, or many of us have been in very much involved in the launches of, of Nexium, uh, and, and actually uh, the success becoming the most sold drug in the world. Uh, we also have a very good, strong advisory board globally, internationally, uh, with creme de la creme, I would say, uh, within this area, so you cannot get better advisors. And as you also have noticed, this this substance is very much developed originally. The, the active metabolite in our prodrug, linaprazon, is developed originally from AstraZeneca by our, our uh, founders in the company. And uh, we have further developed it into prodrug uh, with many different advantages, which you will soon see. And actually, and that is uh, thanks to that, we can, we can state that we will become the best in class and have a potential to become the, the market, leaders, uh, market leader in the future. Uh, going further then into the, into the area and to, to the therapy, uh, the focus, as I mentioned, is eGERD, the rosy part of the GERD disease. Uh, and that's uh, divided into different classes, A, B, C, and D, and where C and D patients are the more moderate to severe patients with more severe erosions. And that will be our key target population, plus patients that are only having partial response from the PPIs. And as I mentioned, 12 billion US dollar in, in potential, and that is based on both epidemiologic data together with our own market research where, uh, as you can see, 30% of the GERD population is, is suffering from eGERD, and we are aiming for the C and D patients and, and the partial responders approximately 50%. This is a chronic disease. You, are, you, you have chronic uh, maintenance uh, uh, treatment, and in average 200 days per, per year per patient, and, and it increases uh, by severity, I would say. And the price level, we are estimating long term, approximately uh, net to gross in US, uh, six to ten dollars per day, uh, and approximately two to three dollars per day in Europe. 
And we now have an, um, um, a competitor in US uh, who has guided on a price initial price level in US on 21.5 US dollar per day. So the potential is, is actually increasing after that. And we are talking a lot about uh, best in class. We will not be first, but we will be best. <laughs> and that's very much based on, on, on uh, this curve. Uh, the holy grail in this area is all about pH control over 24 hours period. If you can reach pH above 4 during the 24 hours or close to 24 hours, you know that you will heal the patient. That, the correlation is clear and you cannot get a better biomarker to, 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 uh, um, to uh, predict uh, the outcome in, in your future clinical studies. So this is what every companies are aiming for, to have acid control over the 24 hours. And that this has been the background why each class in this, uh, that has been launched in this, in this area over the decade have worked on improvement on, on the acid control. And that you see the H2 blockers with Suntac become the most sold drug in the world. They improved the acid control as well as the PPI, Lusec and Nexium became the most sold drug in the world. Now we have the first generation of PCAPs in Vonoprason or Takicab from Takeda in Japan. And they also have improved it further and now they are the market leader in Japan. And uh, our substance, I would say, can deliver more than 95% acid control. So that will be the best acid control in, in among all um, competitors here. And just to give you the example of the, of the, of the Japanese case, they have a, Vonoprason, they have a sales approximately 800 million US dollar only in Japan, and they are the top five most sold drug in, in, in Japan. Um, and this is based on, on the mo milder forms of eGERD and GERD patients with non-inferiority non data versus PPIs. Our target population will be uh, the moderate to severe patients and with superiority versus uh, PPI. So, so we, are, we are positioning this totally different compared to what they have done, and that will, of, of course, support our differentiation in the future. And actually give us a unique uh, positioning in the market as well. And also, if you're going to look at the comparator then and competitors when it comes to acid control, this is Nexium. You need to come up above pH 4, the red dotted line, as you can see, as many hours as possible. First day of PPI, you barely uh, come above pH 4. Takes five days to reach some kind of steady state. But as you understand, for having a, a severe patient, this is not enough to, to be below more than uh, every, uh, I mean, more than uh, nine, six to nine hours uh, b b below pH 4. This is not optimal for a severe patient. And also looking into the compa compa competitor when it comes to PCAB, this is Vonoprason, day one though, so they have a good, strong, uh, fast onset. Uh, but you see also they are dropping uh, during evenings and, and night time. And this is also, once again, not an optimal curve for a, for a moderate to severe patient group, uh, patient group. This should be compared to our drug. This is the fastest onset we have. We reach steady state within uh, less than an hour or approximately an hour, and we stay there over the 24 hours. This is a unique curve. No one has seen it before, and it's, 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 this is actually gives us remember the, the correlation between acid control and healing. So this is a perfect uh, curve for, for, for moderate to severe patients. And uh, of course, it's also interesting uh, looking into the nighttime symptoms. This will we'll come back to that shortly. As I said, when it comes to the PPIs, uh, we, we had six of different PPIs when we launched, uh, when we were involved in that battle. All of them became blockbuster by itself. Nexium, which actually became the most sold drug in the world, uh, was initiated 10 years of, more than 10 years after Lusec or Omeprazol into the market, with a minor difference compared to, to, to Lusec, I would say. I was part of, of the launch, so I know. Looking into the other alternative when it comes to PCABs, we will have an approximately a handful of different competitors also in this market. But as you see, the market is giant. 
And the differences between the uh, pH control is also kind of massive, I would say. Looking at the same curve as we have, the green, we are overperforming the other potential uh, uh, competitors in the future, which are, they are facing the same issue. They are falling down in the night time, and this is not an optimal curve for no one of them. And this is actually indicate why we can classify ourselves as the next generation and they become the first generation. And actually they, are similar, they have similar problem as Astra had with Lina Person, the active metabolite in our, before we, we developed the prodrug. So when we look into this situation, this curve is, is key in promotion, in com how to commercialize a product in this area. This uh, pH curve was the reason why Nexium became the most sold drug in the world, because we could show uh, um, benefits on the pH uh, curve compared to omeprazole. On top of that, of course, this will have an impact on, on clinically, and all physicians are aware of the need of having a pH above 4 to, to heal the patients. On top of that, we have the fastest onset, half the time compared to vonoprazone, and we reach steady state after the first dose compared to up to seven days for, for vonoprazone. We have, the, as you see, the best nighttime control, and also we are aiming for superiority in symptom relief, which will be the, the first, first ever that and no one actually has, has delivered that before, also thanks to that we have a validated symptom score these days. On top of that, we also have a, now, when after the phase two results were, uh, were um, um, presented. We also now learned that we have a very, very good uh, healing effect as well. We, if you look at the most severe patients, C and D patients, we, we heal them after four weeks, approximately 90, close to 90 percent. And that should, could par, should be compared to PPIs, where you have a healing rate in the same study of third, approximately 38 percent. That's an effect difference or delta by 52 percent. That's massive. And also, when we're comparing that with Vonoprazon, who have used the same comparison in Lansoprazol, they have an effect difference of only 20%, and that after eight weeks. So they are actually, we have the more than double effect difference in half the time compared to Vonoprazon. This is a very important differentiation factor in the future when we commercialize this. So what we need to do now is to repeat the results from the phase two, uh, because we already have delivered a significant better healing compared to the PPIs. But of course, we need to do it in bigger studies, in pivotal studies, and that's what we are preparing now. FDA have accepted uh, our thoughts, uh, and now we are preparing for, for the start of the phase, four, uh, phase three program. And that should be initiated during next year. And we are talking about the twin study, 1,000 patients in each study. We, we, we are, it, this will be a, a non-inferiority study, but power for superiority. And power uh, it will be superiority in the label, which is important, both in healing for an eight and maintenance uh, healing compared to versus PPIs, but also superiority when it comes to, to uh, uh, symptom relief. And uh, yes, I stop there uh, when it comes to, to the phase four, phase three program. Just to summarize the, the clinical uh, development program, I would say this is definitely a de-risk clinic, clinical development program. We know, we, have, we know that it works. We have definitely a proof of concept, both when it comes to efficacy. We have a good database also from AstraZeneca, but also in our own phase one, phase two studies, plus the tox and animal studies. It looks promising also from a safety point of view. We have good interaction with the, with the authorities, and now we have passed the end of phase two meeting with FDA. And we have a fantastic biomarker in, in the correlation between pH control and healing. So all in all, this looks very promising, I would say. And, and then, then it comes to the commercialization. This is a, a, a big market, as, as we already learned. But since we are focusing on the more severe patient groups, the intention is to have a more focused and a targeting marketing approach. 
where the specialist will be the key uh, uh, and, and the, and the uh, targeted uh, population that we will go for. In US, of course, we will have price, uh, high prescribers of, of, uh, of the primary care as well included. But in Europe, it will mainly be a specialty product uh, uh, when we're promoting it. And it makes sense also from, from a resource perspective, also from a reimbursement perspective. And of course, there will be spillover into primary care, but nevertheless, the main target is, is the specialist. We also will work together with partners. We will not do this uh, solely by ourselves. Uh, we have already a partner in Asia, uh, a company called Sinorda, and they have a sub licensing partner in China. And actually, China might be, hopefully, uh, will be the first market out. We have already a submission in China, and hopefully we have an approval by 2024 and, and the launch later that year. So that, of course, will validate the substance, uh, absolutely. We have ongoing discussions both with partners in Europe and rest of the world, Latin and, uh, uh, and Middle East. US, we are, we are waiting because we want to uh, we want to find the best partner, of course, but we also we want to have the best value uh, of the asset before we negotiate with them. So that is, uh, we, we are actually waiting for, for a little bit more readout uh, of the phase three program before going into that negotiation. So I would like just to summarize uh, the presentation today. Uh, uh, we have a very interesting substance, a, a lead candidate which definitely uh, um, address an unmet medical need with a huge potential, market potential. It has the potential also to become best in class. We already have shown it in phase two uh, with, a fun, with, with very good uh, healing results versus PPIs. And uh, this is a substance also that historically is, is, is uh, developed from AstraZeneca, so the foundation is strong. Uh, and uh, we have, as I initially mentioned, a strong IP and also it backed up with, with good investors, with biotech, um, good track record there, and also with a very experienced leadership team. So with that said, I stop there and open for questions. Christer, thank you very much for this nice presentation. We have a few minutes for questions now. And I would like to start asking you about uh, the, the nice graph you presented of the market uptake in Japan compared mm -hmm. with PPIs. How much can we extrapolate uh, in Europe, US, uh, from, from this graph. Um, yes, a little bit of how much can we compare it with the expectations in, in, in these markets? I mean, as, as we saw, as I mentioned also, they have a broader approach, head to head to PPI, so they're taking the patient more directly from, uh, from, uh, uh, from the PPIs, and, and the reimbursement system uh, um, allowed them to do that. Uh, but despite that, they're approximately 27% in volumes uh, in market share. Uh, but when we look into this, if, since we, we, will, we will position it from the other end of, of the market and going in that dire direction, so to say, we, since we have uh, the best healing and the best uh, pH control, so we want to, the product to become um, the specialist favorites. So it might take a little bit longer time, but definitely, uh, as you saw in the funnel there, uh, of the eager patients, we have a target population of approximately 50%. Mm -hmm. Then it's just a matter of how much of that, how many percentage of that you can take. And of course, I will not guide you in that. That is your job <laughs> to calculate. But of course, it will be a significant uh, part of that. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we are talking about five, mostly, uh, three to five uh, co uh, competitors. And I think in the future, if you come back in five years, PCAP has taken over off the PPIs, and then we can start to think about uh, the percentage in, in market share. Uh, yeah, but... I don't yeah. go in more into the detail to that. Oh, great. Very, very interesting. And, and one question related, related to your, your actual data. I mean, you show this, this nice curve uh, with acid control above four. Um, mm. yeah, for, for, uh, yeah, sustained through the day. And I was wondering if you could comment, uh, give us some comments on, on 
how important is, I mean, if we translate this into actual benefits for, for patients, um, you are you're showing that you can achieve these healing rates, high healing rates after only four weeks compared, for example, what, what uh, Vonoprasan is being shown mm -hmm. now with after eight weeks, similar level, more or less, after eight instead of four. Mm -hmm. When you speak with, with, with key opinion leaders and medical doctors, what do they think that it's more important? Is it to reach these healing rates earlier or, or more like symptom control, especially during the night? Well, you, you want to reach um, um, healing as fast as possible. When we have asked uh, the specialists, but also primary care, they, they rank that fast healing uh, very high, I would yeah. say, very high in, in a scale of one to, to seven. They are in, in the upper end. But you can also ask yourself, if you, if you get a question, do you want to be healed in four weeks or in eight weeks? What, should you, what will you respond? Eight yeah. weeks? I mean, if you, if you go to a physician that knows the pH is, is, imp is, is key to heal the patient, and if you show them that curve together with these aspects here, I mean, I think it's clear. No, if you have the same price as Vonoprason, is there any reason to pick anything else than, than the green curve there? Yeah. I think, it's a, it's a, I mean, I think in, you have to be in front of the physician in the sale position. How are we going to sell this? And as we did with Astra, we, we actually launched uh, the next year exactly on the same price level as Lusek, but with incre incremental uh, benefits. Not very big, but it actually took some, uh, only a few years to actually to, to, to switch from Omeprazole to, to Nexium. Yeah. And it's the same situation here. If you can actually, if you show this, this is a very good chance to, to convince the physicians if the price is relevant in comparison. Yeah, interesting. And if we stay in this graph, um, the formulation you use to generate this data, if I recall correctly, or based on the previous gra graph, it's a liquid formulation, right? Yeah. And, and uh, now you're not using a liquid formulation. Could you give us some words on how your different formulations compare? Uh, well, this is, this is it's not the same study, <laughs> uh, I have to say. So, but it's once daily for all of them. Our is a liquid, and, and our new formulation, which is we, we have now the final formulation that will be used in the, in the phase three, mm -hmm. uh, that will also be the commercial formulation. And this one we have as a control of more than 90%. But our new formulation with the, uh, uh, during the healing and the new regime that we will go for, uh, we will have more than 95%. Okay. So it looks even better. But then, this is once daily, but our intention in the future is to make sure that we heal as many patients as possible, because these are the average, uh, average curves for all of them. Yeah. And there are always patients below. So if you can increase the average by 5% or 6%, you will have a number of patients coming up about pH 4. And that's what we are aiming for, having a two dose in the healing, four weeks, and when we end the healing, when the, when the patients are healed, we go over to once daily. And that's also something that we have investigated with the, with the, with the, uh, with the specialists and the physicians, and they are supporting it fully because it makes sense. Everyone, if you're going to have the target population for the most severe, we also need to make sure that we can heal them. Interesting. And one last question, uh, because of time reasons. Uh, could you give us some words on your patent protection? And, and uh, yes, how protected yes, you are? Yes, we have uh, the original patent is valid after extension in US. Uh, we will have uh, in US and Europe to 34 and 35. Uh, we have new patents uh, approved, uh, a new polymorph patent in US that will be uh, uh, approved, um, valid until 42. And we have a new formulation until 40. Um, but on top of that, we also have uh, uh, data exclusivity. In Europe, you normally get 10 years from, from, from the registration. In US, we have normally five years from registration, but we also have a grant now from, from FDA. So if we go for a, a H. pylori indication as well, we have an extension of another five years. So we can have 10 years from, from, the, from the registration also in both US and, and, and uh, Europe. So that's also very strong. Great. Christer, thank you very much for your nice presentation and for being with us here today. Thank you.